What's up, Chiefs Kingdom? We appreciate you joining us here. You're watching the Chiefs Report by Chat Sports. And I'm your host, Jay Sanders. And today, we get to do something that is unlike any other show. We get to talk to you about the Chiefs and answer some of your questions on today's Chiefs Mailbag. I'm glad you watched. And let's get going here on the Chiefs Report with the first question coming from Bill Chase, who says, what do you think about the return of Justin Houston back on the Chiefs because he's a free agent? Yeah, he actually did get released by the Panthers today. I don't think the Chiefs would would be there. So I don't think that would happen. Uh, we would have to see, though. I don't know exactly the Chiefs need anybody on the defense right now. So that, that's just kind of my opinion. But we could see. It doesn't really make sense for them to sign to people right now. But Sorry. <laughs> But yeah, I, 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 I can't exactly see that as a kind of a thing that's happening. Tony Fuentes coming in with the next question saying, I hope Sky Moore gets into playoffs. He could come back. He has that IR injury. And so I think that he probably will come back. I don't know, though. There is technically a scenario where you do not see Sky Moore playing anymore. So we could see it happening. Um, but I don't know. This wide receiver room has been kind of something unlike the others, and it's just the way it kind of goes. I think we'll see him back, but I don't know to what extent we will see him back. Lennon comes in with another question saying, do you think we should scoop up Landry off free agency? For the remainder of the season, he won't have any experience, but he would give us a solid target. Yeah, we've talked about Jarvis for a lot here on this Chiefs Report. There's a lot of times where, especially after the trade deadline passed, he was the number one option on the kind of free agent targets just because it's kind of surprising he's not on our roster. Now, at the same time, I think what you said is true. He's not going to have much experience. He's not going to be able to go in there and just perform to the caliber he was performing at with, say, the Ravens, the Browns, you know, back when he was playing. So I don't know if the Chiefs would do it. I think if they were going to do it, it would have already happened by now. So I would like to see them do it, especially if injuries keep happening. But at this point in time, probably not going to be one you see happen any any point in the future, at least the near future. Jack Jack comes in with a question saying, will Sky Moore ever play for the Chiefs again? Yeah, kind of backing off that Tony Fuentes question. I think there's a scenario where he doesn't. I got to be quite honest with you. I think there's a scenario where Sky Moore does not play for the Chiefs ever again, which is kind of sad. I mean, he was a, I'm not going to say highly touted pick, but a guy that the Chiefs really believed in. Honestly, when he was drafted, everybody gave him an A-plus rating. Now, I think at the same time, there has to be something to be said that if he comes back and he's somewhat healthy, you're going to play him. I just think that there is some way that he might just come back and the Chiefs could trade him. The Chiefs could cut him. There's a lot of ways that I could see him just not playing for the Chiefs again. Let me know. Do you want to see Sky Moore play for the Kansas City Chiefs ever again? I want you to type Y for yes or type N for no. Let me know in the comment section of today's video. We'll make this the pinned comment because it's a hot topic right now with him going on IR. Do we see Sky Moore play for the Chiefs ever again? And do you want to type Y for yes, type in for no. Do you think Pat is still showing trust issues with wide receivers? Yes, with Kadarius Tony. I think everybody else, it's, it's becoming less and less. MVS has been somewhat of a solid target over the past couple weeks. Since that drop in the Eagles game, he had the pass interference in the Packers game uh, that wasn't called. But ever since then, he's been solid. I mean, when he's been thrown to, he's caught the ball. It's been one of those options where you can go in and potentially see the option of him going to be a better wide receiver. But at the same time, I don't know if the trust is there just yet. Kadarius Tony, I think it's gone. We saw the way he reacted after Kadarius dropped that pass in the Patriots game. And I think that he could potentially maybe grow that trust back and like, I'll be the first one to say. Travis Kelsey has continued to say he's a good guy. He would appreciate him. And on top of which, it also has Andy Reid also talking about it, saying that he believes that Kadarius Tony is going to be a good guy for the Chiefs. You just got to give him time. People forget his rookie year, he torched the Cowboys. And I think he still has that in him. I think there's just a now a mental block just because of how many drops he's had. It's kind of becoming more of a mental game for him than anything else. Next question, Jerome Bunker saying, what is your Raiders week tradition? Certain food? special TV, foam brick, or something else. So honestly, don't have one just because I'm trying to develop one with the Chiefs port. So if you've got any ideas, definitely send them. But to me, everybody talks about this rivalry, and it does feel like a rivalry. But at the same time, 
the Chiefs just win. They have not lost the AFC West in a long time now. And the Raiders are certainly not the ones to take it from. Them. I think the Chargers have been the closest. Obviously, the Raiders got in the playoffs in that whole tie game scenario a couple weeks, a couple years ago. That was kind of wild. But at the same time, it's, it's, it's nice. I think we should develop one here on the Chiefs support. Definitely get something going for the Raiders week. Something special maybe with the Super Chat menu. We could definitely do that. So if you got any ideas, leave them in the comment section. We could do that. But I like the idea. But as of right now, I don't got much just because the Chiefs just win all the time. I just think it's kind of that easy, to be quite honest with you. Miles has a question for us saying, I'm tired of this wide receiver crap. They won't, but it would be nice if we traded up for Marvin Harrison Jr. Yeah, I, I, I would like that, but the cost it would take for that is something the Chiefs don't have. I think what you're talking is probably giving up one of your wide receivers, which would obviously not be that bad, but then you're giving up probably your first round pick for not only this year, but next year, and a second round pick from this year, and probably your probably a couple sixth, maybe a seventh rounder. I mean, there's a lot that would have to go into it to get him just because he's such a generational talent at wide receiver. He's one of those DeAndre Hopkins type draft picks where you just know he's going to be good and like it's very obvious. I don't think there's a possibility where the Chiefs go in and kind of make that move when there's a lot of other things that need to happen before that. Mahomes can make magic happen. We saw last year he doesn't really need the best wide receiver to succeed and Rasheed Rice the better he becomes in the year, and obviously the more veteranized he becomes in his rookie year, he's going to become that wide receiver one. I would rather just draft another wide receiver in the first or second round. That could become something like Rasheed Rice, build the depth more than going and trying to get that number one for an arm and a leg. I will say this, though. It is almost Christmas, so wish everybody in the Chiefs kingdom a happy holidays or Merry Christmas in the comment section, and let me know what you're doing for your Christmas day. If you're coming to join us here on the Chiefs Sport, then do that. But wish everyone in the Chiefs Kingdom a happy holidays as you go down there and comment happy holidays or Merry Christmas down below. We appreciate all you watching and we appreciate you joining us here on the Chiefs Sport. Plus, it's also a good thing as if you want to get some entries in on prize picks for Christmas, well, we have a deal for you and a Christmas present because you can go in and put in code CLNS at prizepicks.com slash CLNS and get a $100 deposit match. Now, here are my entries for the Christmas game with the Chiefs and the Raiders on Monday. We've got the more on Travis Kelsey receiving yards, more than 69 and a half. I've got the more there. More on Patrick Mahomes and his passing yards at 267 and a half, going with the more. And then Devontae Adams with the more on receiving yards. I'm going for an offensive type game on Monday, and I think that could definitely happen. Now, here's the best part prize picks is super easy to play. It's just you against the numbers. No battling pros, no battling sharks. All you do is pick more than or less than on two to six player stat projections and then watch the winnings roll in. Once again, check it out at prizepicks.com slash CLNS and use that code CLNS for a first deposit match up to $100. Testing my skills on prize picks this season has been the most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. And if you have the skills, you can turn $10 into $250. I've really enjoyed playing prize picks. Honestly, I don't know why it took me this long to kind of discover it, but I've really enjoyed playing it this season. It honestly adds a second element to the sports viewing experience. Unlike any other, makes every game worth watching, and ultimately, it's just fun. I mean, it's you versus numbers. You're not battling people. It's, it's really fun. So again, go check it out at prizepicks.com slash CLNS, and use that code CLNS for a first deposit match of up to $100. Also, shout out to Steven for a $5 super chat who says, jump in the line like CEH to get in a TD. I like that. I like that, Steven. Jump in the line like CEH. That was an awesome catch. Think we'll see a three-headed monster running back for the postseason, or will Pop get the vast majority of the snaps? I think that's a good question. I actually really like that one. I talked yesterday kind of how about the or uh, just, just overall running back room and how it looks. I think right now, I think Pop still gets the majority of the carries. I don't think that's going to be the vast majority. I think we're going to mix in CEH and probably Jarrett McKinnon more. But what this does open up to is having two running back sets with not just Pacheco and McKinnon, but you can do Pacheco and Clyde, or Clyde and McKinnon, or McKinnon and Bob. I mean, there's so many combinations now, and the best part is they all three can catch the ball. They all three can run the ball. I love the depth that the Chiefs have put together with this running back room, and I think it will be a 300 monster. I still think Pop will be the RB1 when he comes back and is fully healthy. I don't know if he'll be fully healthy just yet this week. Obviously, he'll play, but I don't know to what extent we'll see him in. But by the postseason, I expect this all to kind of come together and be what you would call a 300 monster. I like that a lot, though. Enjoy the question, and thank you for the super chat, Stephen. You're a goat, my guy. 
Tony for <laughs> LVP. That's a great username. Why are we not letting Rasheed Rice run deep? Well, I don't know, man. I even this is something that has just been a continuous problem. Last week we had the whole thing of Rasheed Rice never goes deep. He always just catches screen passes, and he continued to do that with the Patriots. He just continued to just just catch the ball. I just don't understand why a guy who has such a nice vertical and 40-yard dash time that we're throwing screens to. Give him a shot. We don't have a deep threat. We keep using MVS. Go let him out there. Go let him run around, especially now that you've kind of established him as that screen guy. You do a fake bubble screen and send him out? That's a touchdown 10 days of the week. I'm telling you, I would love to see that, but I don't know. I don't really like the way that Matt Nagy has schemed this offense, and Andy Reid has called the game pretty well. I just wish they had more plays. It'd be nice. Tell you what, though, there is one way you can help out the Chiefs and help out maybe Rasheed Rice getting that opportunity to go deep. That's by liking the video. So like this video if you want the Chiefs to beat the Raiders. We'd really appreciate it. Let's try and get to, let's say, 500 likes to beat the Raiders. And don't be the jinx. I know who likes it. I know who doesn't like it. If you don't like it and the Chiefs lose on Christmas, I don't want you to be the one to ruin Christmas. So it's easy. It takes two seconds. Go down there. Hit that like button. Don't ruin Christmas. I much appreciate it. And so would the Chiefs. Next question comes in from Miles. We could trade Kelsey to help trade for Marv, is what I'm thinking. Yeah, I understand that, and I do agree. That would definitely make it, but you're not going to trade Travis Kelsey. Like, there is something to be said about loyalty and the way he has kind of just ingrained himself into not only Kansas City, but the Chiefs organization. You don't trade a guy like that. Now, at the same time, obviously Marv would be a great guy, but at the same time, there's just there's too much variables with that. And you're risking a lot for a guy who would be a rookie. I like Noah Gray. I don't want to make him the tight end one. If Kelsey wants to play, I want him to be on the Chiefs. I'm not going to trade Kelsey to anybody else to get a receiver that we don't know is proven just yet, even though he is one of the most talented wide receivers in pretty much history coming out of the draft. Bill Chase comes in and says, what's your family tradition on Christmas, Chase? Well, I'll tell you what. I've got two family traditions that I really like. One of them's on Christmas Eve, and one of them is on Christmas Day. So Christmas Eve, we actually eat tamales and chili every single Christmas Eve. We watch the Elf movie, and we have some nice opening of presents. It's only one, but we open up pajama present, pajamas to wear for Christmas night. And then on Christmas Day, it's a host of food. But the one thing that I love, we have green bean bundles. It's bacon-wrapped green bean it's absolutely delicious. I'm telling you, I literally look forward to Christmas every day of the year because those green bean bundles are so freaking amazing. Oh, so amazing. We appreciate you watching, though, as always, Chiefs Kingdom, and we hope you have a very Merry Christmas. And if you choose to join it with us for a little bit of time on Sunday or rather Monday, we would appreciate that as well. But for now, Chiefs Kingdom, that's all I've got for you. Make sure you subscribe. And happy holidays. Merry Christmas. Go spend some time with your family. Peace out, Chief Kingdom. Peace out.